All right, so let me ask a question. What's your favorite design for Sonic? Do you like his adventure design, his Towie design, maybe even his mania design or his boom design? The fact is, Sonic has gone through so many design changes, it's easy to find a design one person likes over the other. Me personally, I like the design everyone hates. This design. You could call it Western Sonic, or US Sonic, or Sad I Am Sonic, or what have you, but to me, this is just Sonic. This is the Sonic I grew up with, and I think it stands for a lot of what Sonic was. Back in the 90s, Sonic was this edgy, sarcastic, totally hip, radical dude who had a big mouth and a big attitude. To capture that attitude, he always had this smirk, this intimidating smile. To capture how hip he was, he just had a few rows of flat spikes, almost in a mohawk design. Honestly, this design just speaks to me what Sonic is. And of course, we live in an age now where nowadays classic Sonic is just the Japanese design of Sonic. Perhaps that's for the better, it was the more refined design, but this design was hardly ever used and only used for a few short years in the early 90s. However, a few short years was all it took to make some classic Sonic memorabilia that is now very collectible, and some even really rare, all due to them being based on this design. So today, we are going to take a look into the strange and spiky world of 90s Sonic collectibles. First, let's take a look at the absolute most 90s Sonic collectibles anyone could own, the McDonald's Sonic 3 toy set. Included in the set is a flat tails and some card that, when plugged into the device, shoots him into the air, a wind-up Dr. Robotnik, a, uh, spinning knuckles in a cloud, and of course, Sonic burning alive in a bit of fire. No, just kidding. Apparently Sonic is moving so fast his legs are causing fire, so when you shoot Sonic off his base, he rockets forward. An interesting design and honestly, pretty creative for a McDonald's toy. Here we see a lot of what made Sonic's original US design so interesting. Notice his flat, squished-in oval nose, his three rows of flat spikes. I even have a few of these guys with their original bags. Are these guys rare? Absolutely not. However, they are cute to own because they are so cheap, and especially if you want some vintage Sonic stuff in your collection without having to break the bank, this is good to grab. These little guys are tiny though, so here they are compared to the Jazzware Sonic. I find them endearing. I imagine as a kid in the 90s, if you wanted to play with Sonic toys, this was like a dream come true. Seriously, I think this was all they had back then in terms of Sonic toys that could actually do things. Regardless, this wasn't the only set of Sonic toys to come out during this era. Ah uh, yes, it would not be a Sega Collector video if I didn't show off these stupid little things. They're ugly, they're weird, but god I love them. These figures are actually shrouded in mystery because I just don't know where they came from. Some say they were only in the UK, some say they were from the US, some came in these boxes, some came in these boxes, some were larger, and came in these boxes. Regardless of where they came from, these are shockingly kind of difficult to find. When you find them, you won't be spending too much for the most part. I got these Sonics, Metal Sonic, Tails, and Robotnik combined for, I don't know, less than $30. But I also consider myself lucky, because certain characters are expensive, including Robotnik and Metal Sonic. I've shown these little guys off in like two other videos up to this point, so I don't want to spend much more time on them here. What I will say is this. Every pose these little figures are in are based off of stock art, which explains why some of their designs are translated to 3D kind of poorly. Interesting to note that Sonic's design, once again, has the three rows of flat spikes. I think what I love about these guys is their paint. Not their paint job, it's horrible, but the color choice. Easy misconception. In the US, Classic Sonic was never light blue, he was always depicted as a dark blue. So I find the paint choice to be really interesting and, dare I say, accurate. I think my favorite in this set is Dr. Robotnik. Seeing Robotnik in his Adventures of Sonic cartoon design is always a treat. There really isn't a lot of merch of this design out there, so owning something of it does make me really happy. It's honestly just so nice having a set of figures that, like, really encapsulate the look of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. I always refer to these guys as such. I like the color choice for Tails, too. He isn't brown like in the cartoons, he's that shade of orange which is correct when looking at the Sonic 2 sprites and box art. Sonic is honestly just so full of attitude in these little poses, and while the paint jobs may be sloppy, these are just so classic, and I can't help but love them. I really have nothing more to say on these guys, but before we move on to the next lot of collectibles, I just want to show this off. This is not by the same company, but it is the same size. This is actually by Matchbox, I think? Maybe Hot Wheels? I don't remember. But I do know this figure came packaged with a motorcycle, and Sonic could sit on top of it. 
This figure is interesting for so, so many reasons. For one, look at the face! This may be one of the only few Sonic figures to ever be shown not smiling. He actually looks angry here, and that's freaking cool! The figure also has two gold rings in his hand. That's a really cool idea, and I never understood why figure companies just refuse to package Sonic figures with rings. And what I find most interesting are his spikes! Look! They're accurate! They aren't flat! There's not like 50 of them! This is actually accurate, but how and why? This figure was made in 94, when Sega was still using the flat mohawk spike design. This is just really interesting and shows that someone in the production team must have done a lot of research. But we aren't done yet. We still have some plushes to go over. Yeah, Sonic was incredibly marketable in the 90s, so here are an array of plushes. Some rare, some easy to find. Let us first go over one of my favorite Sonic plushes in my collection, the Treasures Inc. Talking Sonic plush from 1997. And yes, I said Treasures Inc. and not Kaltoy. These two are easily mislabeled. In 1993, the company Kaltoy made two Sonic plushes, Sonic and Tails. I happily own the Tails, who I love dearly. But here's the Kaltoy Sonic. In 1997, a company called Treasures Inc. made their own Sonic plush and made him a talking plush. However, Treasures Inc. actually just used the patterns from the Kaltoy Sonic plush and just stuffed a voice box inside of him. They are nearly identical in every way, the Treasures Inc. Sonic plush being a little wider due to the voice box. So what could Classic Sonic possibly say? Well... Yeah, does that sound familiar? It's the old Sega scream from the 90s. I kinda wish it was a plush of Jaleel White's Sonic voice, but hey, this is a cute idea nonetheless. But look at this guy! He has his short and small gloves, bear-like ears, the flat three rows of spikes, and a mohawk. Ah oh, yeah, man. This is the Sonic I know. He's a pretty big plush too, around 15 inches tall or so. This guy is pretty dang rare and expensive. His Kaltoy counterpart can run you around 20 to $30, but the talking version is easily 50 or more. A great collectible! But since we are on the topic of Kaltoy Sonic, check out this little guy. Kaltoy made their Sonics in three different sizes. Small, seen here, medium, like their tails, and <clears throat> ginormous, as seen on eBay. I want this thing so badly, but sorry buddy, $3,000 is a little ridiculous. Their medium-sized Sonic is easily the most common. Their small-sized one, seen here, is a little less common, and thus is more expensive. The giant four-foot-tall version is near impossible to find, and if you do own him, you spend a fortune. Maybe not $3,000, but hey. I like the slightly simplified look of this plush compared to the medium version. His hands are just gloves with no finger detail, for example. This guy is basically the same as his big brother, just same flat spikes and all, but it's a great little guy to have and is a nice collectible. I really like the hard plastic eyes they decided to give him rather than iron-on transfers or what have you. Even Sonic's shoe shape, like it's pointy, just like how his shoes were in the 90s. Maybe I'm the only one who likes this, but I really do like that they gave these plushes flat felt spikes. Lots of people say they don't like this design, but hey, don't be a hypocrite, because a plush that everyone seems to love happens to have this too. So now that we have this cute guy out of the way, let's take a look at this demon. Once again, I think I'm only like one of four people to actually talk about this plush on YouTube, but this is the rare Avon Company Sonic plush. Alright, so I'm sure you all are curious, what is that strange material he's made out of? Good question! He's actually not supposed to be cuddled as most plushes are. This guy is made of a material that can go in water. Why? Because he's supposedly supposed to be a sponge or a rag for cleaning yourself in the bath. I find that incredibly weird, and will never do that. So instead, I've actually used this guy as a pool toy before, a much better alternative. He came out around 1994, and is about the same size as the small cow toy plush, so about 8 inches tall. He too has the flat spikes thing going on, and he shockingly has finger detail for such a small scale. Yeah, he's weird for sure, but endearing regardless. You'll notice his spikes are actually a different color than the rest of the body. I think that's just discoloration and being washed a few times by the original owner. Compared to the Kaltoy Sonic, this little guy looks a little weird, but I really do like him. I like the fact that he has individual fingers. I like the strange material he's made out of. It makes him unique. And when you collect Sonic and your bed is a sea of blue, it's nice to see something stick out, you know? Alright, so let's move on to the holy grail of this video. One of the most definitive classic western design Sonic plushes ever. It's big. It's rare, it's highly desired, and you don't see them often. This is the Sega World Sydney Large Sonic Plush. I'm sure some are a tad confused as to why this plush is so rare. Well, it could only be found at a place called Sega World. 
Sega World was a Sonic theme park in Sydney, Australia. Unfortunately, it was only around for a couple years and then closed. Then a few years later, it was uh, completely demolished. Sega World offered a whole host of collectibles you could only find there and there alone, and it made some great collectibles of characters no one wanted to. Like, sure, you had your Sonics and your Tails merch and stuff, but Sega World prided themselves on their Sally merchandise and Robotnik merchandise. This was the only place to ever make anything Sally-related, and in turn, the only place to make things based off of the early Sally M cartoon and adventures. They made plushes that came in many sizes, all of which are rare. There is not one that is more common than the other, but to have the larger versions, such as this guy, he's an absolute gem. And look at him! He looks just like he does in the Sonic cartoons. His big cartoonish eyes, his flat nose, his bare ears, and his short spikes. Not to mention his mouth is actually open, making him look very happy and cartoonish in design. You'll notice this guy has red straps on him. This was actually designed to be a backpack, much like all the other larger Sega World plushes, but I have unzipped the back and filled it with plush toy stuffing. Zipped him back up, and now he's a proper plush. Even his shoes are designed excellently, showing the pointed look they used to have during this era. I never would have gotten this plush if it wasn't for my friend Jay, who has gotten me a bunch of Sonic stuff I never thought I'd one day own. Wow, look, the boy himself has his own modest but unique Sonic collection on display. I got this plush like a year or two ago, I think, and I never really said much on it. That's because I'm still in awe I have it. But here he is. In my collection, he is the Holy Grail. And he truly is classic Sonic to me. Alright, this has gone on long enough. There you are, everyone. Even though this video is longer than my future, I haven't even scratched the surface. There are a lot of items I didn't cover. In fact, this video was actually one of the first videos I ever wanted to make when I started doing collection videos. But I've been holding it off saying I won't do it until I own a few more items. But those items in question have popped in and out of my eBay watchlist for about a year and a half or so, so I think it's safe to say the video should come out now, before I wait much longer. I really hope you all enjoyed watching this video. No one really covers the early 90s Sonic stuff outside of the fantastic Japanese collectibles because they all look weird. But there is a real charm to them, and I hope I kinda opened everyone's eyes here. Thank you all for waiting so patiently for the next actual video. Sorry it's been so long. But I'm still here, and I still intend to make videos, so until next time, this has been the Schniz Knight, and I hope you all have a good one.